Hello students, welcome back to the biology class. In the last class, we continued with the chapter number 8 that is human health and diseases and we covered the topic of immunodeficiency diseases. We learned in the last class that these diseases are of two type, primary and secondary. Primary immunodeficiency diseases are those which are present from the time of birth and the best example to talk about this is SCID which is severe combined immunodeficiency in which a person is born without any B cell as well as T cell. Now the secondary type of immunodeficiency diseases we learned in the last class are those which are, which are not present from the time of birth but a person acquires once the birth has taken place. So the it is more easy to find a person with a secondary type of immunodeficiency disease compared to the primary one. Primary has a more genetic background because I just told in the last class that it, it starts from the time of zygote formation because there is an error with a gene so that's why it is called as primary but the secondary happens because of multiple factors responsible like malnutrition, infection, metabolic disorder and even the cytotoxic drugs and we learned in the last class that the best example to talk about immune, secondary immunodeficiency disease is AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. We learned in the last class that AIDS is a disorder in which the cell mediated immunity becomes weak and this weakening is because of reduction in the number of the helper T cell. We learned that because the helper T cells number comes down so it also significantly reduces the activity of B cells because we have learned already in this chapter in quite previous videos that the helper T cells are responsible for activating the B cells. So this is how the complete immune system becomes weak. We learned in the last class that AIDS is, was first uh, reported in USA in 1981 among the homosexuals and we even learned that Robert Gallo and Montagnier they have played an important role with the discoveries regarding the retroviruses as well as the HIV. We learned that in 1986 it was first reported in India among some sex workers in Chennai in Tamil Nadu and in 1986 itself it was named for the first time as human immunodeficiency virus and previously it was called as HCLV3 that stands for human cell leukemia virus type 3rd. In 1960s somehow scientists believed that this was the time duration when somehow it entered from monkey infected monkey to the human in African continent, uh, in some tribal people because they have the habit of sometimes eating uncooked or raw meat or otherwise not properly cooked or clean meat so blood was somehow there in that meat and it entered into the human body. Uh, South Africa is considered as the world's AIDS capital and we learned in the last class even the diagram of the HIV AIDS. We learned that it is made up of uh, this HIV is made up of uh, a glycoprotein coat. Uh, this is significantly made with the help of contribution of the host cell. And then below the glycoprotein coat, uh, the glycoprotein coat also have the glyco uh, also have the uh, knob-like structures, which are the receptors present on the surface, uh, which are the proteins which help in interaction between the host cell and the virus. We learn just below the glycoprotein coat there is a there is a double layer of protein coats which are called as caps uh, capsids or protein coats and under these protein coats we have two identical copies of single stranded RNA filaments along with uh, two copies of reverse transcriptase enzyme. We learn that the size of the HIV is uh, 90 to 100 nanometer or 90 to 120 nanometer and then we also learned that it's a type of retrovirus which is spherical in shape and it is also called as one of the enveloped virus because envelope or glycoprotein coat is present. We learned in the last class that once it enters into the human body it will first interact with the macrophages and once they enter the macrophages the macrophages start acting like HIV factory and then inside this HIV factory it takes over the machinery of the host cell 
and the RNA of the virus undergoes reverse transcription to form the DNA of virus. This DNA of virus enters inside the nucleus and starts uh, and gets incorporated into the host nuclear DNA and takes over the complete machinery. Now what will happen is obvious from the NCRT diagram which we did last time that uh, these small viral particles will be formed which will be all integrated together to form the new viruses and these viruses will come out from the host cell and the host cell will survive this infection because the, ho the parasite wants to take out maximum benefit out of the host cells. So there are two host cells possible that is macrophages and helper T cells. And uh, the incubation period we learned in the last class is uh, which is ranges between 6 months to 10 years depending upon the immune system of a person and on an average 28 months or 2 and a half months you can say is the incubation period and the uh, detection of the, uh, of the uh, HIV is done with the help of ELISA that stands for enzyme linked immunosorbent assay which is followed always by the western blotting. If the positive result is the area of ELISA then it is always confirmed with the help of the western blotting.